In the studio is GP Dr John Kyle and the Deputy Chairman of the Health Committee, Jim Wells. John Kyle, there's a debate about whether or not ME is a real medical condition. Can it be medically explained? Well, it's a complex condition, Paul, and we certainly don't understand it, uh, nor do we know precisely what causes it. But it is a real medical condition. It's accepted now that this is a genuine, bona fide medical condition. Uh, it's a it's a chronic, long-term, debilitating condition. It cannot be diagnosed with a simple test, uh, but it is recognised that it does genuinely exist and patients are affected by it. And do you believe, Jim Wells, that the service out there is adequate at present for these people? No, it's totally inadequate, Paul. Indeed, there's only one specialist in the entire province covering thousands of, of sufferers. When that person's on holiday or away, there's no coverage at all. So we really need to have a much more effective service provision for these people, some of whom are almost entirely bedridden. You talk about thousands of people. How, how can we be sure how many people there are out there? It's difficult because there's, there's various variations uh, in uh, ME, ranging from mild to really causing people to give up employment and basically are housebound. So it's hard to actually define how many people have this. I would say it's somewhere between two and 4,000 in Northern Ireland. I have met several sufferers where I've seen the before and the after. Before they had ME and afterwards, and it's like night and day, totally different. So I'm convinced it exists as well. How limited are doctors in what they can do to treat their patients? Well, this is part of the difficulty with it, Paul. The patient looks perfectly well but they feel absolutely dreadful. And in terms of treatment options, they are limited. Uh, so really what uh, doctors can offer is, first of all, they can offer a diagnosis. They can tell the patient, this is what you have. And that often is a step forward for the patient. They can provide information about the nature of the illness and the normal course of the illness. And there are some treatments that are of some benefit, um, CBT, Cognitive behavioural therapy can be beneficial. Uh, a graded exercise programme, that can be beneficial. Uh, sometimes if a patient is suffering uh, understandably from depression as a result of it, antidepressants can be helpful. So there are limited uh, treatments that are beneficial but no cure. And there's a further complication surely in that the patient is not going to know how long this is going to last. Well this is what adds a lot of the stress and difficulty uh, sur that surrounds the whole problem. The patient doesn't know whether this will last for six months, six years, 20 years. And the carers, the family, they don't know either. So it's this uncertainty and the prospect of, of continual debility that is so difficult for people to cope with. And in case of the case of children, uh, that must be very distressing because it's going to interrupt their education. A very worrying trend is the increasing number of children who have ME and for many of them, they're stuck at home, they can't get to school, their education suffering, and they're looking forward to their entire life and wondering will they continually have this debilitating disease. So that's something I've become much more aware of in recent years. So are there plans on the Health Committee then to make this a priority? Well, I've been heavily lobbied by a group in Newry and also Horace Reid from Balna Hinch on this issue. They believe there's an urgent need to improve and to have some form of specialist clinic in Northern Ireland which will have the capacity to deal with all the sufferers and we don't have that at the moment. Will we? I don't know. We, it's something we're, we're looking at at the moment. It's something that the service providers are going to have to examine. But certainly we need to start to take this condition seriously. But it's probably not going to be top of the list of the health minister. No, not. But it's time that all the conditions actually accepted ME existed and treated it seriously. And I'm not convinced that's happening. John, uh, there is no cure for the condition. So what hope is a doctor able to offer to sufferers? Well, Paul, uh, first of all, many patients recover or make an excellent recovery from ME or chronic fatigue syndrome. Uh, they, but the recovery is long and it can often be uh, set, it, there can often be many setbacks and, and relapses. But first of all, you can offer the hope that, that for many patients they do make a recovery. Uh, secondly, uh, they need to know that there's support, that, that people understand. And, and providing emotional support, advice, professional yeah. advice in terms of their exercise program, uh, how to cope with the psychological consequences of the illness. Um, and and by, by providing that support, that does help patients and families to cope with what is obviously a very difficult illness. John Kyle, Jim Wells, thank you both. Thank you.